Let us pray. Father, we're so thankful and grateful for this, another opportunity for us to gather in this little house of prayer, to come and to worship you in spirit as well as in truth. Oh God, we uh, just pray that you would bless those that have need today, many that are still suffering and sick, those who are going through troubled times. And then God, we praise you for those who are doing better and uh, we praise you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, and praise you for the opportunity you give us to worship. As we worship you today, may we do so uh, magnifying the holy name Jesus and lifting you up because worthy are you of our praises, O Lord. Have your way in this place today, God, and we'll be careful to give you uh, praise for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Choir, you can be seated. Well, we have just a little more normalcy, if you can call this normal, uh, than we've had in probably 15 months, and uh, we're thankful for that. We just, uh, we're glad that you're here today, and we welcome you to uh, God's house, and uh, as we come together today to worship, uh, we certainly pray that uh, God would be in the midst and that he would have his way in all that we do here. Uh, in the way of announcements, let's remember our service is Wednesday evening. Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock, we'll have our services. And uh, Amaya's not happy this morning, is she? <laughs> Bless her heart. Uh, but that's all right. Isn't it good to have children in church? Amen. Any other announcements at this time? Yes, sir. Mike Ledbetter needs prayer, all right? Any other prayer request? Let's remember Miss Carolyn, okay? Yes. Sir. All right, let's remember Miss Pat's son. Oh, goodness, let's pray for your granddaughter with COVID. Uh, I have a funeral tomorrow with a family that just lost a loved one to COVID, so let's pray for that family. Had a family friend that was buried yesterday, uh, lost their life to COVID, so let's pray for them as well. Friends, uh, everything's not just back to normal yet. COVID is still out there, so be very careful and continue to do what you need to do to try to keep it away. Use that hand sanitizer. Wear those masks when you need to. Uh, I know many of, many of our people have been vaccinated, but uh, just be careful, okay? Any other prayer requests? All right, Dr. McFarland's family. Let's remember that family, okay? All right, anybody else? I got unspoken. Okay, unspoken. Any? Let's remember your great niece, okay? Any other unspoken? Hands up all over the building. We all have unspoken prayer requests. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Roger, if you would, lead us to the throne of grace, praying for those in need. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we come to you again today, Lord, and we thank you so much, Almighty God, for finally starting to get back to a normalcy in our church family, Lord, and in our Tributes to you, Almighty God, through our daily activities. And Lord, I ask that you bless us today. Bless this message, Almighty God. Open our hearts so that we receive it. In the Spirit, Almighty God, that you would have it come to us. And I ask, Lord, that you place your Holy Spirit down upon this church today, Lord. Lift us all up, Almighty God, up to your altar of grace. And pour out your blessings upon these good people, Lord. And those who couldn't be here today, Lord, I lift them up to you. Those prayer requests, Almighty God, all the needs that were unspoken, you know who and what, Almighty God, is needed. And Lord, I ask that you bless everything that we have lifted up to you in a mighty way through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, if we'll take the hymn, we'll turn to page 546.
Looking for off toy. If you will, take your hammer on and turn to page 616. And if you will, stand. 616. <clears throat> Okay, we'll let us stand and let us sing our doxology.
I'll be good to them today. I won't ask them to do it again, okay? I, 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 I think that's probably my favorite that the choir sings. I love that one. I'm glad they're feeling fine, amen? Steve, we sure appreciate you leading our choir. Nancy, thank you for making that beautiful music. Amen. And uh, thank you, choir. We certainly appreciate you. Now, let me remind you, too, I said we, we mentioned the Wednesday evening, but we start Sunday evening services today. Amen. We'll have a Sunday evening service at 6 o'clock here this afternoon. So uh, you remember and you come and uh, let's worship the Lord uh, uh, this evening as well. Dennis? Okay. All right. If you will, take your Bibles and turn with me to the third chapter of Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. And I want us to look at verse number 20 as our text verse of Scripture. How good it felt to see things just a little bit more like normal this morning. The only thing that I saw out of context a little bit whenever we took up. The ushers, you all did a great job, by the way, this morning. The only thing I saw that really happened that scared me a little bit is uh, everybody was putting in, but I saw Ed try to reach over and take out. And uh, that scared me just a little bit. <laughs> was you making change? You put a dollar in, took five out? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Praise God, I tell you what. Merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Amen? Amen. All right, let's look at the scripture together. Uh, Revelation uh, 3.20. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. I want to bring to you a message today that I've titled, Answer the Door. He's knocking. Answer the door. He's knocking. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the Word of God. May we never abuse it or misuse it, but may we use it for your glory. And may it be our uh, GPS roadmap for living. Help us always use it to guide our lives, to direct our path. In Jesus' name, use the vessel I yield to you. Amen. Amen. If we really look at this particular passage of Scripture that I've read in your hearing... Uh, many times preachers of the gospel will take what I call this passage of Scripture really out of its context. And uh, one of the things that uh, I was always taught in Bible college was never for any reason whatsoever take a Scripture out of its context. But I just don't believe that we're really taking this Scripture out of the context when we use it to try to draw someone to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now we can't draw. The Holy Spirit does the drawing. But the Holy Spirit of God uses His Word to do the drawing. Amen? And, and so uh, many times this Scripture is used for that. And, and in one sense, I'm going to use it that way today. But now before I use it that way, let's talk about it in its context. Who is it written to? Well, you'll find out that this particular scripture is written to the Laodicean church. Now, the message of Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, Jesus, praise God, is the faithful witness. And uh, I pray that, that, that I will always be a faithful witness for the Lord Jesus. But Jesus is the true and the faithful witness. Now, whenever I think about that, he is the true and the faithful witness to the Laodicean church. 
And uh, the Laodicean church is no longer reliable as witnesses for God. Now, I want you to understand that we're living in the Laodicean days. Whenever we look at many of the churches today, there are many of the churches today that, that, that are walking in the path of the world. The world has moved into the church. And as the world goes, so go the church. But friends, it ought not to be that way. It ought to be as the church goes, so goes the world. And the church ought to be doing the right thing. But here is the Laodicean church. They're no longer a reliable witness for the glory of God. They no longer hold to the divine authorship and inerrancy of the Scripture. Many churches today will tell you that, that this is not a book that is inerrant, that there are errors, there's mistakes printed in the Bible, but there are the mistakes that men made so that God, God allowed them to be printed there so that we wouldn't make the, main, the same mistakes. But we're making worse mistakes. Amen. And many times because we're not reading the Word of God. So, so the Laodicea is no longer holding to the divine authorship of of the Scripture, uh, they're not holding on to the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus basically calls them a lukewarm church. Well, now, whether you believe it or not, church, we're living in a lukewarm church age. I mean, there's too many times that we can find somewhere else to go or something else to do. We don't find it necessary to be in the house of God as we once did. Now I can remember as a boy growing up that I didn't have any choice in the matter. I mean, Sunday morning, my mama and daddy woke me up and said, boy, get ready. We're going to Sunday school and we're going to church. I didn't have any, I didn't have any choice. And uh, Sunday afternoon, and we always went into what we call the Baptist hour. And back then, the Baptist hour was 7 o'clock. We started church on Sunday evening at 7 o'clock. Sunday evening, about 6 o'clock, my folks would say, All right, boy, get ready. We're going back to church. Wednesday night, boy, get ready. We're going to church. And uh, it wasn't if I wanted to go, you're going to church. And uh, now, whenever I got to be a little bit older and a little bit rebellious, I kind of made up my mind that, bless God, you may have made me go to church nine months before I was ever born, but I'll tell you one thing, when I get grown, I won't go to church. I'll take me a, few, a little bit of time off. I won't go to church. And then God called me to preach, and I've been going to church ever since. I go to church when everybody else stays at home. And so, friend, I, I love the church. But, but we're living in a time whenever the church has grown lukewarm. There's too many other things to do. Now, I've been watching our congregation. And a number of our people, thank God, they've returned back to the church. And I've been looking for some of you to come in your pajamas and your easy shoes. I mean, it's easy to get used to the online streaming. Amen? And uh, I saw a little cartoon the other day, and it was talking about uh, Sister Jones coming into the church. And Sister Jones had on her pajamas, her house coat, and her bedroom slippers. And the cartoon says she got used to the home online streaming. So she come to church in her pajamas. Well, I, I, I'm glad to say that we haven't had that to happen yet. But, uh, you know, I just tell you to sit down and listen to the Word of God if you were to come that way. But now listen, we need not to be a lukewarm church. We need to be a church on fire for God. Now you need to understand that salvation in, is an individual matter. Uh, you can't be saved for anyone else. I know that, uh, that you, sometimes you wish that you could. I've had some of my own loved ones that I've knelt at an altar of prayer and said, Lord, I'll just give them my salvation. But it don't work that way. It just don't work that way. Granddaddies can't be saved for grandchildren. And uh, grandchildren can't, 
uh, can't save their uh, granddaddy and grandma. Now, they may lead them to the Lord, but they can't save them. We can't be saved for our grandchildren. We can't be saved for our children. We can't be saved for our mamas or our daddies. Uh, and the list could go on and on. Salvation is an individual matter. When Jesus saved my soul, He knocked at my heart's door. Friend, He began to draw me. And that's why I, I don't believe that it's wrong to use this particular Scripture in this particular text this way. Now, there are several things that I want you to notice in this Scripture as we begin to talk about answer the door, He's knocking. Now, I know some of you may wonder, now Brother Danny, where in the world did you get this message? I got a good old friend, John Mark Collier, who lives over in Alabama. And me and John Mark communicate with each other just about every week. I've never met him face to face. I know him through Facebook. And I know him through phone calls. We call each other. And I got to know him. And in fact, John Mark tells me that one day he plans to come to Gordon Avenue. I don't know when that may be. Uh, but uh, John Mark sent me a text this week and he said, Sermon Suggestion. And uh, of course, I looked at it and it just kind of jumped out at me and pulled me into it. And uh, so I, I didn't title it what he sent to me and I kind of worked it up in a different way, but his message inspired me to use this scripture this week. So, God uses, one, uh, uses us at all times. God may speak to you through someone else. And that's exactly what happened whenever I come across the idea for this particular outline. So, Brother John Mark, I know you'll probably tune in or, or you'll listen to this a little bit later. I just want to tell you thank you, brother. Appreciate it. The first thing that I want you to see in this is we need to consider... Who it is that's knocking at the door. We need to consider who it is that's knocking at the door. Well, I want to tell you who it is. It's none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, I don't know, uh, Barry, or some of you uh, older Gordon Avenue members that, that, that was here back in the 1980s, but I preached a message along these lines back in the 80s and I can't even remember what I titled it, but I had old John Rudisil to go outside of the church and walk around the church. He walked around the church. Used to those doors right there was the back doors to this church, those wooden doors. And I had John to, to walk around, uh, and, and I told him, I, I said, now at this particular certain time, I'm going to say, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And I said, John, whenever I say that, I said, I just want you to start wailing and framing on the door. And I don't know if you remember that, but he did. Lightning to have scared Gordon Avenue Baptist Church to death. I said, Lord, and everybody turned around and looked at the back door. I said, good gracious, that's Jesus letting me in. But you see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Too many times there, there's someone knocking on the door and, and, and we just don't want to let them in. we got what we call the little peepholes in our doors. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And we'll kind of stick our eye up to the peephole. And we'll look. And if it's somebody that we don't want to see, we'll just say real quick, shh, be quiet. Maybe they'll go on. Maybe they'll go on. I done that one time and bam, bam, bam. I know you in there, boy. I heard you moving around. <laughs> but you see, we don't need to be peephole Christians. When Jesus knocks on the door, we need to open the door. Amen? Amen. Now, perhaps you're like the innkeeper uh, during Christmas time. There's just no room for him. You see, there's room for everything else, but there's just no room for Him. I don't have any room for Him. Uh, you filled your life with everything else, with all the pleasures and the sins and all of the other things that you want, but you just don't have any room for Him. 
All I got to say to you today, glory to God, is answer the door. He's knocking. He's knocking. Now, think with me. The Bible says that he was in the world. And the world didn't know him. He was in the world. He made the world. He created the world. But yet, the world did not know him. John chapter 1 verse 10. Answer the door. He's knocking. Now he comes to you. Drawing you. Trying to get you to accept the marvelous grace of God that's given through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He knocks and he knocks and he knocks. And the question is, will you receive him? Will you open your heart's door? Will you let him in? Answer the door. He's knocking. He fills the universe. He fills the heavens. And the Bible says that the universe and the heavens can't even contain him. He's a big God. He's a great big God. But who is able to build him in the house? Seeing the heavens of heavens cannot even contain him. Second Chronicles 2, 6. The heavens and heavens can't even contain him. He's such a big God. But yet, he's small enough to take up residence in your heart. In your life. If you'll just open the door. He wants to fill your heart. He wants to be in your life. Answer the door. Glory to God. He's knocking. Answer the door. But then there's a second thing. That I want you to see in this. Notice what it says. If any man. Woman. Boy or girl. Will hear my voice. And open the door. If you'll just hear. And open the door. How many times. Uh, did he knock on your heart's door. Before you finally opened the door. How many of you are in this place today. He's knocked on your door. Many 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 times. And yet you've never opened the door. Unto him. Now I know you've all saw the. Artist depiction. Of Christ standing at the door knocking. Well, doors in that particular day, they were a lot different than they are now. Now, we've got a doorknob on the outside of our house. And we can unlock it and we can turn that knob and go in. But you see, it had to be open from the inside in that particular painting. There's not, there's not a doorknob or not a way to open it from the outside. And basically that, that, that picture was drawn from this particular scripture. And uh, somebody made the statement, well, I, it's a beautiful painting. It says, but there's one mistake you made. There's no way to enter the house. There's not a doorknob to enter the house. And the artist said, well, that, that's true. But the scripture says uh, that you've got to open the door. So you're inside the house. And the true and the living door is knocking on your door. You've got to open the door. You choose whether or not to open the door. Answer the door. He's calling. Answer the door. He's knocking. He's calling. He's pleading. Come. Answer the door. He's knocking. If He's speaking to you today, if He's speaking to you today and you can hear His voice, Behold, I just stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and he opens that door, I'll come in and sup with him. Now that word sup means to fellowship with him. Now if you really want to get to brass tacks about what it means, let's just open the door. I'll come in and I'll eat with you. I'll fellowship with you. We'll dine together. We'll have a meal together. And you'll fellowship with me. Too many times we scoff uh, at hearing his voice. You ever heard his voice? That small, still voice that speaks to your heart, that tries to draw you. You ever heard that voice? Listen. And all of a sudden you say, 
that's not God because maybe it was something you didn't want to hear. And I always tell everybody, listen to me, I always tell everybody, if you hear what you think is that small, still voice of God saying something to you, you'd better take this Bible that I'm holding in my hand or one just like it. And you better search the infallible truths of God's Word because God will never speak to you in a small, still voice and tell you anything contrary to the Word of God. He won't do it. He won't do it. I heard a story about a, a lady who had uh, uh, done some terrible things to her children and they died. And she made the statement that God told her to do it. God won't ever tell you to harm your children. God won't ever tell you to do things like that. God won't ever tell you to do wrong. And always remember that. Try the spirits and know that they're of God. Amen? Know that it's God's small, still voice that's speaking to you. So many times we scoff at the claim to hear God's voice. That uh, little, small, still voice. And uh, we feel a little sorry sometimes whenever we heard the voice and then we don't follow the voice. You don't know how sorry... I feel whenever I know that you've heard his voice, but yet you fail to obey his voice. Listen, hear, answer, answer the door. He's knocking, answer the door. That slight inner tugging to do right, but yet you still don't do right. Hey, answer the door. He's knocking, he's telling you, do right, answer the door. He sometimes uses drastic means of, to get your attention. Friend, it may be the loss of a job. Answer the door. He's trying to knock. Answer the door. He's knocking. And you won't open the door. So maybe he just moves you aside. He moves whatever it is that you put above everything else that you put in front of him. I made the statement at Fellowship a couple of weeks ago. I got a sermon filed away somewhere. Uh, Marta filed it for me, so uh, uh, it's filed away somewhere. That sermon's title, Will God Burn Your Barley Field? And it's a good sermon. It's not a popular sermon because people don't like to hear it. People don't like to hear that we serve a God who will get your attention. And I'm thankful for that. Man, there's been some things that God moved out of my life because I worshiped them more than I worshiped Him. And I promised God Whenever he uh, drawed, uh, whenever he began to draw me back to where I needed to be with him, that I would never, ever, ever put anybody else or nothing else in front of him. Be careful. God will burn your barley field. Now the text of that scripture is taken where David is trying to get Absalom to come. And Absalom is hard-headed and he won't come. So David sends soldiers out. Absalom's busy in his barley fields. He likes his barley fields. So David says, well, I'm going to get his attention. I'll get rid of those barley fields, and then he'll have to come. And he burns those barley fields. What's your barley field? Boy, it gets quiet whenever. What's your barley field? Think about that. What's your barley field? When David burned the barley field, Absalom ran to David and says, why in the world did you burn my barley field? He said, well, I've been calling you to come for a long time. He says, I see that I had to burn your barley field to get you here. God has a way of moving those things out of our lives that we make gods of. So you be careful. You be careful whenever you make God out of something else. God's going to be number one. He's going to be Lord of all or not Lord at all. Now, I know that's not popular, but it's the truth. God may bring something into your life to get your attention. It may be the loss of a job. It may be the loss of a family. Boy, I know about that. It may be the loss of a home. Better to lose those things than to lose your own soul. For what shall it profit a man if he were to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So, Mark 8, 34. Listen. Hear. Answer. Open the door. He's knocking. He's knocking. And he'll knock. He'll call. But listen. 
He'll not open the door for you. You've got to open the door. You've got to answer the call. You've got to open the door. He'll never make a forced entry into your life. God won't force Himself onto you. He won't. But He'll knock. He'll knock. Open the door. Let Him in. He's knocking. He comes by invitation. He, he, he leaves the choice up to you. He makes His offer of life to you. He makes His offer of hope to you. He makes His offer of joy to you. He makes His offer of peace to you. He makes His offer of everlasting life to you. He leaves it up to you to accept it or reject it. He knocks. He knocks. Answer the door. He's knocking. But then the third and last thing that I want you to see, notice what it says. I will come in to him. I will come in to him. What the Lord is seeking today is a close, intimate fellowship with you. That's what he wants. Answer the door. He's knocking. Well, Lord, I'm busy right now. I, I, I'm just real busy right now. I, I don't, don't have time right now, Lord. God don't like lukewarm relationships. In fact, if you read a little bit further, the Bible says that he spews those out of his mouth. Now, if you want me just to go ahead and tell you in good old southern South Georgia terms, some of you make him sick to his stomach because you're lukewarm. Some of you. Now, you notice I got one finger pointing at you and there's three pointing back at me. Because listen, as I told you a week or so ago, I'm just not that perfect man either. I know y'all thought you had a perfect preacher. Ed reminded me that I was a shiftlet the other day, and that's why I'm not perfect. And that, that's all right. I still love my shiftlet heritage. But I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I, I, I try to be. I try to be. Listen, my wife reminds me I'm not perfect all the time. And that's, but that's okay. She's not either. <laughs> But you see, we love our imperfections toward one another. And it just causes us to draw closer to each other. But uh, we're none perfect. But Jesus is perfect. And He sees every deed that each one of you do every day. He sees those. Are you lukewarm? Think about that. Now I told you I was going to tell you what spew out of His mouth in, in southern vernacular means you make him so sick to his stomach that he vomits you out he vomits you out now for those of you who don't like that word vomit I'll just be he regurgitates you okay he spews you out of his mouth but he loves you he loves you so much that, that he wants your life to center around him too many of us has got our life centering around everything else. God wants our lives to, to center around Him. Around Him. He knows how empty and disappointing that our lives can be sometimes. That's why He doesn't want a casual relationship with you. He wants a, a real relationship with you. He wants more than occasional communion with you. He wants constant communion with you. Constant communion. Paul said pray without ceasing. What is he saying? Always have a prayer on your heart at any given moment. Now, I heard some sirens. And in the good terms of my old friend that's with the Lord now, Jerry Clower. 
Them syringes was making a lot of big noise the other day when they come by my house. But I stopped what I was doing right then and right there. And I said, Lord, I do not know what's going on in my neighborhood. But I do know that somebody's in trouble. I saw two deputy sheriffs come by wide open. And I saw two ambulances come by wide open. Somebody's in trouble. Lord, whoever that, that's in trouble right now, God, I pray. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you will touch whoever is in trouble right now. Right now, God. Every time I see that, we can be riding down the road. You can ask my little wife. She'll tell you the same thing. Every time an ambulance may pass us, I'll stop and say, God, well, I won't stop my vehicle, but I'll just stop and just say, Lord, somebody's in trouble. Help them, Lord. Help them right now. God wants us to have that kind of constant communion with Him. And that's not pinning any stars in my crown. That's just something I do. That's how God deals with me. He may not deal with you in the same way. But that's way, the way that God deals with me. I've always got a, a direct line, a communication, a, a line to get in touch and in tune with God. And so I, I do that. And you've got that same opportunity to have that line to get in tune and in touch with God. Because if you're saved by the grace of God, the, the same God that's my God is your God. And you can just call on Him at any given moment. He wants constant communion. The message of Christ knocking at the door is primarily listen to the lukewarm saint rather than the sinner. But we use it telling people that if you're a sinner lost and without God, He's knocking on the door. Answer the door! How long is it since you've been close to Him? Close enough to Him to say, Jesus, I sure do love You. I love You, Lord, because You first love me. How long has it been since, since He inflamed your heart with His marvelous love? How long has it been that you've heard that small, still voice say, let me come on in where we can have supper together. This, this speaks of the deepest, most intimate kind of relationship. What is God saying? I'll be a part of you if you'll become a part of me. That's what God is saying here. I'll be a part of you if you'll be a part of me. We'll just become a part of each other. Jesus said, I am in my Father and my Father in me. And friend, when we get saved by the grace of God, Jesus is in me, but then as I grow my faith, I get to be in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, I want to live my life where people will be able to see Jesus. I don't want them to see Danny. There's a time in my life that I wanted to build a big name for Danny. But let me tell you something, I could care less. Well, I'll build a name for Danny. I want to build a bigger name for Jesus. He's knocking today. Right now. He may be knocking at some of your hearts. Maybe you're sitting there and you're saying, you know, preacher, I've been some of those lukewarm Christians that you're talking about today. It'd be a good day to get in tune and in touch and get closer to God today. He's knocking Open the door. Think about that. And maybe you're here and you're lost. You've never accepted Christ as your personal Savior. He's knocking. Answer the door. Let Him in. He'll save you. He'll cleanse you of your sin. What will He do for me if I open the door? You ever thought about that? What will Christ do for me if I'll just open the door? You got a minute? I want to tell you what He'll do for you. First of all, He'll abide with you. He'll abide with you. The Bible says He'll never leave you, nor will He ever forsake you. Not only will He abide with you, but if you really get saved by the grace of God, He'll baptize you. Now listen, if you get saved by the grace of God, I'll take you into that watery grave. But He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost in fire Amen. and fill your heart with His love. 
He'll cleanse you. You think ivory soap works good? You let the blood of Jesus get a hold of you. It'll wash away every sin that you've ever committed. That's what He'll do for you. When He knocks on your door, if you'll just open that door, He'll abide with you. He'll baptize you. He'll cleanse you. He'll deliver you. He'll deliver you from darkness. Boy, I like that one. Whenever I come to that one, I said, Hallelujah, I ain't got to be worried about the dark no more. Amen? Amen? He'll deliver you from the darkness. He'll encourage you with new wisdom. He'll fortify your soul and give you everlasting life. And the devil won't be able to touch your soul. Not only will He fortify your soul, but He'll guide you as you walk through this life. If He knocks on your door and you'll just open unto Him. He'll help you through troubled times. Anybody here ever having troubled times? He'll help you through those troubled times. He'll influence your walk in life. He'll uh, uh, journey through this world with you. You won't have to be traveling by yourself. He'll keep you forever. Now, boy, I could stop right there and preach for an hour. Boy, I'm glad He keeps me. Now, there's a lot of folks don't think that He can keep you, but I serve a God that's big enough to keep me. Amen? In fact, He loves me enough that He lets me know that He's going to keep me. In fact, if, uh, if I get a little bit out of line and I'm one of those sheep that seem to go astray, He'll leave the 99 to go find the one. That's how much He loves me. He's going to keep me. Not only will He keep me, but friend, if He knocks on my door and I'll just open up to Him, He's going to love me with an everlasting love. Anybody in here ever saw somebody you just couldn't love? Think about that now. Be careful. Be careful. And we've got to be honest, haven't we? We've saw some people that we consider to be unlovely. But there's not anybody so unlovely that God can't love them. In fact, God does love them. And He expects us to too. He'll love you with an everlasting love. He'll mold you into what He wants you to be. Quit trying to be what you want to be and let Him mold you into what He wants you to be. If you'll just open the door. He's knocking, open the door. If you'll just open the door, He'll navigate your life. We got these GPS navigational systems now. And they work real good until the computer goes down. And then you have to wonder and wish that you had learned how to read a road map. Amen? Well, you won't ever have to worry about reading a road map or even a GPS system whenever you come to Him because He'll navigate your life through this world. He'll open new doors for you that you'd never dreamed would open. If you'll just open that door when He knocks. He'll provide those things that you need. Now you notice I said those things that you need, not those things that you want. Several weeks ago, uh, a light, a light, uh, engine light, uh, came on in my truck. And it started loping just a little bit. And I just couldn't figure out what was going on. And uh, I like my little truck. I really do. But I didn't like it enough that I wanted to keep it if I couldn't get it fixed. So I took it to the Honda place in Tifton. They told me how much it was going to cost to get it fixed. I said, I don't think I'm going to do that right now. That tells you how much it was going to cost. <laughs> I said, I don't think I'm going to do that right now. I said, I believe I'll just get me a little piece of black tape and put over that engine light. That way I won't be able to see it and it won't annoy me. But the loping just kept annoying me. But I procrastinated. God has a way of doing that to us sometimes. I procrastinated. Now for those of you who don't know what that word means, that means I kind of held off in doing anything about it for a while, okay? So I just didn't do anything. 
I went in, I looked at Marta, and I said, baby, I'm going to trade that truck. I am not going to keep that truck. And Marta's little attitude was, well, let's just wait. Let's just wait. I didn't want to wait. But I never found the time to go and look for another truck or make another deal. A week after I looked at her and said, I'm going to trade that truck, a recall notice came in the mail. And it talked about how the engine lights of that year model truck was coming on and staying on. That I needed to bring it in. So I brought it in. And they replaced the fuel injector system in that truck and the light hasn't come on anymore. God provided what I needed to fix the truck. Now, I wanted a new F-154. That's what I wanted. A new F-154 F F. 154 truck. That, that's what I want. In fact, that's what I was going to get. But I procrastinated. And now my little truck is fixed and I like it again. I like it again. Ed said I could get more for it on trade. I'm going to hold on to it, Brother Frank. If God had wanted me to have one, he'd, he'd make a way. I don't need one. He'll meet my needs, not my wants. If you'll just open the door when he knocks, he'll qualify you to serve him in places that you never dreamed of. If you'll just open the door when he knocks, he'll refresh you from the well of living water every day. If you'll just open the door when he knocks, he will establish you. That's a King James word. Our word would be established. But the King James word says establish. He will establish you with whatever you face in this life. He'll establish you to be able to face it. He'll transform you daily and make you into what you ought to be. He'll transform you into His likeness if you'll just open the door when He knocks. He'll use you for His glory, not your glory, if you'll just open the door when He knocks. He will visit you daily if you'll just open the door when He knocks. He'll walk with you everywhere you go if you'll just open the door when He knocks. If you'll just open the door when He knocks, He's knocking. Open the door. Answer the door. He's knocking. He'll yoke you with Himself. And his yoke is easy and his burden is light. That word yoke means that he'll just become one with you. And he'll walk with you, talk with you, fellowship with you, and make you all you ought to be. He's knocking. He's knocking. Will you open the door? Or will you just let him go away sorrowfully? Think about that. In just a moment, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. In just a moment. If you here and you've been one of those Christians that made God sick to his stomach, it's a good day to make things right. He's knocking. Open the door and let him in. Best place to get right with God is at an altar of prayer. You can make your altar in your pew or you can come to this prayer altar right here in front of the church. If you're one of those Christians that he wants to spew or vomit out of his own mouth, be a good day because he's knocking. And all you got to do is open and let him in. If you're here and you're lost without God, be a good day for you to get saved. He's knocking. 
He's knocking at your heart's door. Will you open and let him in? You see, the choice is yours. I can't make it for you. No one else can make it for you. He's knocking. Open the door and let him in. Let's stand together. Father, I've shared with your people that that you've given me. Oh God, it's your message. Answer the door. Answer the door. He's knocking. Answer the door. Lord, help us today to answer the door as you knock. In Jesus' name, amen. God speaking to your heart. You step out and you come. Oh.